In education, attribution theory deals with how learners attribute their successes and failures. For example, if six students fail a mathematics exam, each of them may attribute their failure to different reasons. Student A may think, I didn't do enough revision these last couple of months. I have to work harder. Student B may think, I'm just poor at mathematics. Student C may think, It's too bad that I was sick that day. That really affected my performance. Student D may think, What's bad luck? Who could have guessed the exam would focus on those areas? Student E may think, Mathematics is just too difficult. And student F may think, Those other students did well because they had private tutors, so I just need to ask my parents to get me one. One important thing to bear in mind is that those six reasons may not be accurate. What only matters here is how the students perceive the reasons for success and failure. It's the student's perception that is important. In attribution theory, we are looking at three different dimensions for these perceptions. These are internal versus external, stable versus unstable, and controllable versus uncontrollable. The first dimension is internal versus external. In other words, is the perceived reason for success or failure related to the individual learner's own abilities, effort, or emotions? Or is it related to external factors such as task difficulty, teacher bias, or luck. The next two dimensions relate to how stable and controllable the factors are. Regarding stability, is the perceived reason for success or failure something that can change, like effort, emotion, or task difficulty? Or is it something that is constant, something that is unchanging? For example, if a learner thinks he or she failed a chemistry exam because the exam was difficult, that factor would be considered unstable. Maybe the next exam will be easier. If a learner thinks he or she failed a chemistry exam because chemistry is a difficult subject, that factor is considered stable. The subject is difficult now, and it will continue to be difficult next year. Now let's look at the third dimension, Control. Is the perceived reason for success or failure something that a learner can control, like effort, or is it something that is uncontrollable, like one's natural aptitude or one's innate intelligence, which are internal factors, or the difficulty of the exam, or the quality of the teacher, which are external factors? Of course, if something is stable, or in other words, unchangeable, that automatically means that we cannot control it. How can we control something that cannot be changed? Therefore, this dimension of control only really applies to unstable factors. So if we look at those six examples again, you can see that each of them falls into a different combination of factors. Student A's reason, I didn't do enough revision these last couple of months, is categorized as being internal, controllable, and unstable. Student B's reason, I'm just poor at mathematics, is internal and uncontrollable and stable. Student C's reason, It's too bad that I was sick that day. That really affected my performance. Is internal and uncontrollable and unstable. Student D's reason, What's bad luck? Who could have guessed the exam would focus on those areas is external and uncontrollable and unstable. Student E's reason Mathematics is just too difficult is external and uncontrollable and stable. And student F's reason Those other students did well because they had private tutors is external, controllable, and unstable. So altogether, there are six combinations, three internal ones and three external ones. The main point of attribution theory in education is that students tend to be more motivated to learn 
if they attribute success or failure to factors that are internal and controllable, like effort or the use of study strategies. If students believe their success or failure are mainly determined by internal and controllable factors, they will be more likely to think that their efforts are worthwhile. In contrast, if students believe that success and failure are mainly down to luck or teacher preferences or natural talent, why would they want to invest a lot of time and effort in learning? Let me just add a disclaimer here. Motivation is very complex and is influenced by many factors. Attribution theory is just one piece of the puzzle. So, how does attribution theory apply to teaching? There are several ways in which teachers can help students attribute learning outcomes to factors that are considered internal and controllable and, as a result, hopefully increase the student's motivation to learn. First, teachers can make sure tasks are at a suitable level of difficulty. Second, teachers can make the assessment criteria as clear and as objective as possible. Third, Teachers can consider factors like improvement and effort in the assessment criteria. However, they would need to keep in mind the previous tip to make the criteria clear and objective. Fourth, teachers can help students understand that what they may think of as ability is largely the result of effort over time. For example, someone who is amazingly talented at playing the violin obviously has great ability but that ability wouldn't be there without endless hours of practice. Fifth, when students get stuck on a task, teachers can give them some extra support to help them complete the task or find the right answer. Sixth, teachers can help students develop effective learning behaviors like regular revision, and teachers can introduce the students to different strategies for learning, revising, and memorizing. Lastly, Teachers can give feedback to students that encourages them to attribute their learning outcomes to factors that are internal and controllable. For example, instead of saying, that answer is correct, you're very smart, you can say, that answer is correct, you've obviously put a lot of thought into your answer. So that's a brief introduction to attribution theory in education. The use of feedback will be the topic of the next video. See you then.